Hi everyone, welcome to week 10. In this week we're going to see how the logic of the conditionals we introduced last week works within a formal system. We're first going to try constructing proofs using these conditionals in an informal way just to get a sense of how they're going to operate in our deductive system. If you want to show that if P then Q holds, you first assume P and then show that Q follows within that assumption. Let's have a look at how this works now and see how the corresponding ways of reasoning with biconditionals come out of that. Okay, so just as we did before with the Boolean operators, we're going to introduce the notion of conditional proof informally and then discuss it in formal terms within our Fitch deductive system. I want to discuss three rules here. The first two deal with material conditionals. So suppose that we agree on a conditional P arrow Q, if P then Q. And if we also have P, then we're entitled to infer, this just means therefore, Q. And that's valid. This method of taking a conditional plus the antecedent to get the consequent is called modus ponens or conditional elimination. There's a second rule that's a little less obvious but no less valid called modus tollens or contraposition and it works like this. Suppose that we have if P then Q and we also have not Q. Then we're entitled to infer not P. This again is called modus tollens or contraposition. If this seems counterintuitive to you, I'd invite you to pause the video for just a minute and recall the equivalence between if P then Q and not P or Q and how this not P or Q in conjunction with not Q will give you not P. So if you'd like, take a minute, pause the video, even construct a truth table and think about why this is. An ultimate journey. All right, so much for the rules for conditionals. There's also a whole class of rules, of course, for biconditionals. The first we're just going to look at is biconditional elimination, which says that if we have P if and only if Q, and we have P, then we're entitled to infer Q. This is just the same as if we had P if and only if Q, and we had Q, we could likewise infer P. And this is the rule known as biconditional elimination. Now let's see some examples of some informal proofs using conditionals. The first of these that we'll look at involves what's called the transitivity of the material conditional. In schematic form, we can just state this as follows. If P then Q, and if Q then R, then we're entitled to infer if P then R. Let's have a look at an example of this. Suppose we have the following two conditionals. So it's pretty straightforward to see that if this first condition holds, namely that if A is large, then A is larger than B, then it follows that if A is larger than B, then a is larger than C, then this first antecedent up here will just entail the consequent down here without this other atomic sentence. But proving it is worthwhile practice, and here's how we do it. We suppose, for the sake of argument, that A is large. Well then it follows that A is larger than B by the rule of modus ponens, or conditional elimination, or sometimes called detachment. So that's modus ponens on 1. And if A is larger than B, then it follows by modus ponens on 2 that A is larger than C. And so from our initial supposition up here that A is large, we're able to get our consequent down here that A is larger than C, and this entitles us to infer that if A is large, then A is larger than C. We're going to see how this works formally in just a minute, but it's worthwhile to get the basic idea now in an informal context. So in order to do this, we started with the initial assumption of our antecedent, and then showed that from that assumption, the consequent we wanted followed, and that's what entitled us to infer what's down here on line six. And proofs like this can get quite complicated. Let's consider a more complex example that has an embedded proof by cases in it. So here's how this works. Suppose P is that we go to the movies. If we go to the movies, then we'll either see an art film or we'll see a blockbuster. If we see an art film, you'll fall asleep, Q1, and you'll be disappointed. If we see a blockbuster, that's R, it will be too commercial, R1, and you'll be disappointed, S. So from all this, it follows that if we go to the movies, P, then you'll be disappointed. Now this is a pretty complex informal proof, but the structure is pretty clear. We want to show that if P, then S. That's our consequent here. So we assume P, and we see that P leads to Q or R. Q implies Q and S. Simplification gets us S. R implies R and S. And so we get P implies S by this embedded proof by cases within this assumption that P in order to prove the conditional. So this case is a little bit more interesting, but I think the structure of it is quite clear. And in the next video, we're going to see how to do these 
used within a formal system like Fitch. So now let's just conclude by looking at ways of proving biconditionals. Now we've seen that a biconditional is just equivalent with two conditionals of the following form, if p then q and if q then p. So really what a proof of a biconditional is, is actually just two proofs of conditionals of a certain form plus conjunction introduction. So we start off assuming that p, show that q, assuming that q, and showing that p, and from here we can introduce the biconditional, which it doesn't matter which way it goes. So really a biconditional proof is a special kind of two-part conjunction introduction. You prove if p then q, and you prove if q then p, and then you put them together. And we're going to see in greater detail how this works in the next video.